What's up guys, Dark Dally here playing Ghost Recon Wildlands and today I'm going to continue my series on Assault Rifle Bullet Drop with the MK17. I figured I'd start with this one because it's the favorite of a lot of people and I'm kind of eager to see how it does because if you recall from the last episode, the last episode we tested all of the rifles stock at 250 meters on that wall. I'll go ahead and put the results up on the screen now so you can see where they dropped. They had four levels of drop across all the assault rifles. And the SCAR-17 was kind of disappointingly low on that. So I want to do a video for each rifle showing some of each rifle's own unique qualities and how they can improve bullet drop through modifications. So who knows? Who knows how this thing will do once we modify it? First, I want to have a look at some of the scopes because some of the scopes and sights in this game don't you know, really work with certain weapons, so I kind of want to check each one out. I've already gone through them all here with the Mark 17, and I'm going to show you some of the odd things you may see. First, with the digital scope. Now, this is the one I'm using for the tests, and it is accurate, but it has a weird little thing. Let's, let's back up just a little bit here, and I'll show you. It looks like it shoots off center, but it doesn't. Let me show you what it does. We fire a shot. See, it looks like, see how it appeared just up and to the right of the crosshair, but then as you wait, your breath takes the crosshair back up to it. Let's, let's find a better spot to do that in. Let's try right here. See, it looks like it shoots up and to the right, but then you just wait, and your breath will take the crosshair back to it. So, I'm not sure what's causing that, but it's obviously, it is accurate. It's just a thing of it, like it resets your visual breath pattern every time you take a shot and makes the crosshair appear down from it. But it's centered. There are a couple sights here, however, which are a little odd with the MK17. Let's have a look at these. Going down the list, first oddities we're going to really see are going to be with... Let's see, most of this stuff actually appeared pretty right on. All right, the ACOG scope. It shoots well with this. It works, but there's one part where it doesn't really. But I think it's just the scope in general. Here's the thing. If you look down in my bottom left corner of my screen on the right D-pad, it says, it has that circle with the cross through it, saying this scope has no zoom levels. But for some reason on every rifle, it does let you do this. And here's the thing with this. So make sure that the scope's centered because when you shoot it normally, see bullet hits dead on. But when you hit this, it shifts the scope to the right. And now when you shoot, it shoots off to the left. You see that? So that is one oddity. Different weapons do different things with this ACOG. And this is what the Mark 17 does. It shifts it off to the side for some reason. So that functionality shouldn't even be there. This scope doesn't have more than one zoom level. So who knows what that actually is. And then there's some very small oddities. I just want to get these out of the way, guys. Sorry for all this. With the Russian red dot sight. Very, very small issues. But they're going to present themselves when you swap back and forth between the different reticles here. This will actually be easier shown closer to the wall. Alright, so with our Russian little chevron style reticle here, when you shoot, it almost goes below the tip of the chevron crosshair. So use your own judgment with that. When you shoot, it, it definitely it definitely does not shoot above it. I wouldn't I would almost venture to say it kind of shoots under it. So if you're, if you're doing really precision shooting with the Russian red dot sight, be aware that with the Chevron, it seems to shoot just a little bit low. And then when you swap reticles to here, yeah, we get, the, we get a different effect. Notice it's hitting there. It's not even hitting, it's not hitting nowhere near the middle of those three lines. It hits at the top of the bottom line. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be in real life. I've never used one of these sights in real life. Just be aware of that. So that's some of the little idiosyncrasies with the scopes on the MK17. Now let's go over here and first let's let's get our digital scope back on because that's what we're testing with. We can test with any scope, but I like the consistency of using the same scope for everything. So let's grab our digital scope back. And we still have all the stock parts, so I'm going to take a sighting shot just to make sure that we're still hitting the same place we were in the original test, which I see no reason why we wouldn't. We should hit right at the very bottom of the third brick up from the bottom on the wall. Let's see here. And yeah, we had one go a little high, so I fired a couple more shots, and sure enough, we're hitting right at the bottom of that third brick up from the bottom of the wall. That's right where this was hitting before. Now let's take a look at modifying it. Let's see what kind of performance we can get out of this rifle. This is, you know, really what I want to see here. I mean, in real life, this is a DMR. It should be, 
you expect this to be a long range and accurate rifle. Let's see what we can get out of it. Now, buttstock, I've already tested this stuff and you're free to do so at your own leisure, but I don't wanna take your time here. Buttstock, magazine size, under barrel, muzzle, none of that has anything to do with bullet drop. The only thing that's going to affect bullet drop is gonna be the length of the barrel and whether or not we have a range finder. It's gonna be just like the sniper rifles from all the testing I've done, unless I've missed something. And if I have missed something, please tell me. But it looks like this is it. So let's go ahead, let's put the long barrel on first, just a long barrel and see how much gain this gives us in bullet drop. Let's see how much more accurate we can shoot this thing. All right, so we got a shot off with the long barrel and that put us up, yeah just as I figured that put us up almost two bricks higher now there is what looks like a little hole above the bullet hole that's actually just a really suspicious looking chip in the wall I've encountered that so many times doing testing here there is only one bullet hole there and it's right in the top corner of that brick and you can see it shot about one and three quarters bricks higher or so so that's a pretty good amount of gain that puts us higher than the stock the best of the stock rifles let's see what we can do with the rangefinder and I mean, who knows what's going to happen with these rifles. They may all level out at the same place. If you guys recall, when I did the sniper rifle bullet drop series, the M1891 was hitting higher than any other rifle. But its modifications did like half, had like half as much effect on it. And so it kind of hit up with the top ones. And I hope we don't see that here. I'd like to see one of these rifles shine. And I gotta say, I really wouldn't mind seeing the Mark 17 shine a little bit. So let's get that rangefinder on here. This is going to be the only other thing that we can add, which will increase our accuracy with the bullet drop. And then we'll update this on the overall compilation graphic, of course. All right, so that should give us a little more gain. Probably only like half a brick or something, but I can't say for sure until I see, because I've not done this test yet. First time I'm seeing it. All right, yeah, it did. It moved us up maybe about a third of a brick, actually. It moved us moved us up a total of two bricks. You know, I mean, what's a brick? You know, it's this wall at 250 meters. It moved us up exactly two bricks. And, uh, all right, so that's the gain that we can expect to see out of modifying the MK-17. I'll make sure to get this updated in a graphic for you here. Okay, so here's our overall compilation, now including the modded MK-17 with the overall, you know, compilation that we have so far. Of course, this is the first one we've modded, so there's nothing really, you know, yet to compare it against. But here we go, here's our start. Of course, this is only the third video in the series. So, as we test more rifles, and I'll try to get these out as quick as I can, we'll quickly have more and more stats to compare and, and see what kind of fits your style and your feel better. Or maybe... You know, maybe you don't care about what a rifle's bullet drop is, and you just are curious. I mean, after all, it's just something you adjust for. It's only a number. There we go, guys. All right, that's really about it for the MK-17. We could try uh, other parts, but again, I've already tested them. They don't do anything. Suppressor will not affect bullet drop either. The suppressor is only going to affect the speed at which the bullet travels to the target. Tell me what you think about the test for the MK-17. And, well, I guess we'll... We'll simply have to have more data to see how it stacks up against the other rifles, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to tell me what you think in the comments below. It's been a real pleasure. Guys, I'll catch you next time. I'm Dark Dally. See you all later.